In this video, we're going to be making a wall hanging liquor cabinet. First, I've got to go to SketchUp, work up a design, and then we'll come back to the shop and we'll build this thing. So, let's get started. The majority of this cabinet is going to be made out of 3 quarter inch pine with an MDF back and a plywood French cleat to hang on the wall. I'm going to create the box first and use it as a reference to make the frame the exact size I need with about a quarter inch overhang on each side except for the top. Pieces of rebar will be cut a little bit undersized and epoxied into the holes drilled into the frame. Then I'll add the top with the decorative edge and a cam lock will be mounted in the front of the frame. It'll have hinges on the bottom to attach the frame to the box. Then I'll give it a few shades of polyurethane until it's a shade that I'd like. So that's the design process. Let's get into the shop and build this thing. I'll start by cutting my lumber to rough size with a handsaw to make it more manageable. Then I'll take it over to the table saw to get the exact dimensions that I need and perfectly square cuts. I'll also be cutting a rabbit in these pieces to slide in the back. Now that I've got all the pieces cut to size, I can do the rough layout. And since the bottom of this cabinet will be taking a lot of the stress, I'm going to use a table saw to create a stronger bottom joint and attach these two pieces together. Next, I'll glue and clamp the bottom to the sides and leave them for a few hours to set. And while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I'll put a decorative routed edge on the top of this piece, and in this case I'm going to use a Roman OG profile. Once the glue is set, I'll take the clamps off, and since I waited for the box to be assembled before cutting the back, it's easy to take a few finesse cuts until the back piece fits perfectly. Now I'll put all the pieces together along with the French cleat to make sure everything fits perfectly, and then I'll put some glue in the rabbets and laminate both back pieces together along with the French cleat to make one solid back piece. To put the top on, I'm just using a simple butt joint and some glue. There will be no pressure on the top so it's more than enough to hold this piece in place. To make the frame, I'm starting with pieces cut to rough length, and I'm going to stack cut them to make sure I get the exact same dimension on both the sides and the top of the frame. Then I'll mark a line down the center and use my dividers to make even hole locations across the length. Once the hole locations are marked, I'll take the pieces to the drill press and drill holes for the rebar posts. The next step is to use a pocket hole jig to fasten the pieces of the frame together. When I'm making pocket holes, I like to drive the screw twice. Once for a test fit, to make sure everything lines up and looks good, and then once for the final assembly. After I cut the rebar, I'll give it a coat of lacquer so none of the mill scale or rust comes off on anybody's hands. I also cut these pieces of rebar a little bit undersized so that'll allow me some movement during the glue up if I need it. Next I'll mix up some 5 minute 2 part epoxy and start placing in the holes I drilled for the rebar. This is a little bit of a tricky step figuring out how much epoxy to put in without getting too much squeeze out. This completely depends on the diameter of the hole that you drilled and the length of the rebar so I went pretty light on the epoxy for the first few holes until I figured out just the right amount. Once I've got all the pieces in place, I'll press the long rails of the frame together making sure to keep it perfectly in line with the side rails, then I'll reassemble the frame with the pocket hole screws and I'll add some dowel plugs to hide the screws for a bit of a nice aesthetic. There are a lot of ways to do this step, but I wanted to see how well pocket holes would hold the frame together using just one screw and glue. 
I must say that I'm pretty impressed with the result. I don't see this frame going anywhere. The next step is to take out my square and perfectly center the frame on the box, then measure out my hinge locations. Once the hinge locations are measured out, I'll drill the first hole and put the screw in to hold the hinge in place for the rest of the holes to be drilled. Then I'll measure the position for my cam lock. If you want to know how to mount a cam lock perfectly in wood without having to glue it in place, I made a full video explanation of my method showing how to do that, and I'll leave that in the link in the description below. Now I'll mark out the slot that'll receive the cam when the lock is engaged, and I'll route that out with the palm router. Now it's time for the finish, and I'm using a tinted polyurethane in an HVLP gun powered by a standard air compressor. And I'll continue to give it light coats until it's the shade that I'd like it to be. Tinted finish seems to be one of the only ways that I've found to mitigate the look of large grain structure when working with white wood or pine. The last step is to reassemble all the pieces, straighten the screws, and make sure the fit and finish looks right for the client. Then we'll mount it on the wall and give it a quick test run. So this is the finished wall hanging liquor cabinet. Came out pretty good if I do say so myself. The customer opted for uh, keeping the mill scale on the bars. Uh, along with a little bit of rust, which I actually like the look. The cam lock works great, and something I didn't count on was this little lip on the bottom here, catching the door so it actually will not hit the wall. So that's a nice bonus. I've got it mounted to the wall with the cleat just temporarily, but there's enough space here that you could anchor it in and get into a stud if you needed to. We're only holding 50, 60 pounds max, including the cabinet, assuming all the bottles are full. I'm pretty happy with the way this cabinet turned out. Feel free to go ahead and like, subscribe, and leave any comments or questions you have down below. And I'll put up some product shots at the end. But until the next video, you guys have a good one. So this is the finished 